I will clarify that. And that's one of those things, amendments that this uh, piece of legislation suffered at the 11th hour without input from all the stakeholders. Um, rulemaking itself, um, there's two kinds of rules. There's an emergency rule, things that need to be done on truly an emergency basis. They have a 90-day timeline attached to them. Um, there's a process in place for it, and very candidly, if there's any way I can avoid going through rulemaking uh, on an emergency basis, that's the road I want to go to. Um, from my standpoint, on the regulatory side, I think it creates mistrust with the industry right out of the box. And when I engage in rulemaking, I want input from all the various constituents, the stakeholders in this industry, before we make those decisions so we can make informed decisions. Um, the second kind of rule is just a, a basic rule, and really what I want you to, to take away from this forum is promulgating rules is not, does not give me the ability to create new law, all right? The rulemaking process gives me the ability to clarify existing statutory provisions for what I just, just gave you. Um, and it, it also allows me to follow other statutory mandates. Um, I have to have what's called a statutory basis and purpose or a legal foundation of in order for me to promulgate rules. So uh, I can't promulgate rules that are contrary to statutes. If there's an area of law that uh, specifically addresses an issue, I can't create a rule that is contrary to it, right? Um, but that process is truly going to make or break us together in this next year. Uh, and I'm very sincere about that. We need to have patience at the table. We need to have patient representation at the table. We need to have the center dispensary owners, the grows the uh, infused products manufacturers, we need to have the city, state, local government, state government, law enforcement, city, state, federal law enforcement if possible, health department, I mean, everybody in this room is a, is, is a participant in this process. But I'm also going to throw this out at you, at you, and the reality is, is if I started rulemaking tonight and went around the room, just one real easy topic, the bill provides a residency requirement. If I asked each of you what it means to be a resident, you're all going to tell me something different. The reality is, is we probably wouldn't agree tonight as to what a resident, the term resident means. You know, you would have statutory definitions, you would have your own idea about, gee, when I moved to Colorado, you would, could use fish and games uh, definition, you have to be here X number of days before you can get a license, all those kind of things come into play. So, it's just not realistic for me to ask everybody in this room to participate. I'm hopeful that you will work amongst yourselves find an advocate for your specific niche or your specific line of business. If you're a center, find somebody that represents centers. And when I say that, I'm asking about, uh, I want representation from large centers, and I want representation from small centers. I want representation from those in the metro area. I want those representation from those in rural areas. Everybody has a different business need depending upon what kind of a center you are. I don't know your businesses. I don't pretend to know your business, but I need your expertise to make this work and I'm hopeful you'll work with me to make that happen. Um, one of the, the rules I wanted to touch on real quickly, uh, that Mike uh, had mentioned earlier to me, he got well over 100 emails that dealt with grow concerns. Well, I've been out, um, getting a little educated, which is a scary concept from a government standpoint. I get it that if I go to multiple grows in a day, chances are I'm going to spread bugs. I'm going to probably, um, you know, I'm not going to have them now, but I'll get them from the plants and take them from one bird to another. Um, it's devastating for your growth, okay? I, I understand that. But I would tell you this, if you've ever been to a casino, look up, don't look down. There are the tools out there, video surveillance systems. If you, you, you read HB 1284, one of the things that we uh, have to be, uh, set standards for is just that very tool. It's a wonderful tool, and I've been out to some groves and some centers that already have the technology, a web-based system. Wow. Um, you know, if, if I can attach plants to patients via a number and a camera can see them, do I really need to come out and get in the middle of your business during the day? Probably not. And I'm hopeful that you will work with me to implement those kind of things. Now, they're not cheap, there's a cost, but I think you need to recognize a few things. First and foremost, it's going to validate your business. It's going to validate your business. It's going to take the local law enforcement, the state, the federal law enforcement, that monkey off your back. I'm happy to facilitate that process and work with you to make that happen. It's going to create a regulatory scheme or a foundation that works. It's good for Colorado and it's good for the United States, and I hope that you'll join us in engaging this process and making it work. Thank you for your time.
Thank you, Matt. So far, informative? Huh? Why not? Good. Good. Here's what we're going to do right now. Uh, a couple things. Um, I want, once again, to thank an out of industry that understands it's time to get involved in the industry. I'd like to thank Red Bull for their sponsorship of tonight. Give them a big round of applause. EMC2 Billing for their banking tonight and their, their sponsorship tonight. But now we're going to have some fun. Who, if you have questions, you're going to go to the mics right now. Please, here's my rules on the Q&A session. People, you have these people at your fingertips right now. Stay attentive. People are going to come up and ask questions. If your question deals with you personally, don't waste everybody's time. If you come up and you want to ask a question that you think is great for people to hear, questions that many might have, please ask it. But once again, if it's personal, keep it out of this room. These people, everybody's here to get information on what's happening and what's going to happen within the industry. So with no further ado, do I, who's number one? Who's number one here? Two, three, do I have any? Sir, pop up. Go ahead and pop up. Do I have anybody on the other side? If you have questions, make your way over toward the mics right now. Okay? And by the way, on the way out, you can grab Red Bull when you leave today. But I'm telling you, right now, this session, this is what you want to hear, this Q&A session. Okay? So we'll kick it in right now. Sir, you want to ask your question? Go right ahead. Go up to the mic. Go ahead. Okay. Is it on? Do we have that mic on? All right. Yeah, it's on. Okay. As a small dispensary owner, um, we're forced to take on new partners to simply remain in business. We're fully integrated, which I think a lot of dispensaries are, which means we grow everything, produce everything, and sell almost everything that we do. So now this is a, a big shakeup in our business. Um, it means that uh, what you just mentioned with the $7,500 license fees, we have to acquire three of those. So everything's times three at a minimum. We actually have multiple grows, but we will be forced to just try and do with one. Um, that doesn't count the local fees, which in my case in Boulder will be about um, $5,000 each, again times three. Uh, with legal fees added in and, and some other miscellaneous fees, we're looking at over $40,000. And that is, in my opinion, an, an exorbitant fee to stay in business. We've been in business two years. Um, let's see. It's, uh, it's not a light matter also, in our case, to have to consider and take on new partners to remain in business, but we have to, new financial partners. The governor just signed this yesterday, so we have three weeks to make all this happen, to find new partners, to interview them several times, and, and them, us. Um, it's, uh, the deadlines are, they're simply impossible to meet. Three weeks. Will you be lenient in some way with these deadlines? I mean, I don't even know if we can make this happen in time, but it, we're, we're under incredible pressure, as I'm sure a lot of people are in here, to make this happen in time. Could we get a panel member to respond to this, please? Any panel member would like to respond to this? Well, I'm, I don't, is the mic working? Okay. Uh, I'm happy to respond to it, and, and I'll be very candid with you. I'm very sensitive to the small business owner. It may not look that way. Um, but that is a reality, and, and it is a concern of mine um, because it's not my intent to put anybody out of business. It's not. But I do have to regulate the industry as a whole. And what, as I said earlier, what I can offer to you um, is that if there is a surplus in the fund this year, you will see a very significant reduction in fees um, for the next year. And keep in mind that that fee I'm talking about is an application fee. It's a one-time application fee. So I'm not advocating that's going to be that, that cost every year. In terms of the timelines, um, that's a piece 